Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this PD is about immaturity, which we've all had many um, trainings on this year. So I approached this as a follow up session kind of reminder meeting, so it won't be very long at all. Um, my objectives are to revisit what immaturity is, to revisit how to invest, how it, to integrate technology into the classroom and to share where to find resources. The Future Classroom Maturity Model is a tool that can be used to decide how mature or advanced a school or education system is in terms of its level of innovation. The model I'm going to show you specifically deals with maturity in the use of technology in support of education. If we think about this very simply, a low level of maturity could be shown by schools that are not really using technology or are using it in a very limited way. A high level of maturity will be shown by schools that are using technology effectively to bring improvements in helping learners achieve their goals. In this maturity model, there are five stages. Each stage represents a different level of maturity, with stage one being the lowest and stage five the highest. In the first stage of maturity, technology is used within traditional teaching approaches. The learning is teacher directed and located only in the classroom, with students being consumers of learning content and resources. In the second stage, the learner is the user of technology. In this way, technology is used to personalize the learning to some extent by providing different learning routes. In the third stage, the technology being used is not simply an add-on to the normal teaching approach, but is a fully integrated part of the teaching and learning practice. The technology at this stage would not only be used for providing content, but also for producing content. Students would use technology to develop their own digital products. At the fourth level of maturity, technology is more connected so that learning supported by technology can take place anywhere and anytime. And at this level, the learner takes much more responsibility and control of their own learning. To achieve this, the technology must provide reliable access to tools, resources and other people beyond the classroom in order to support collaborative learning at all times. The fifth level of maturity is the highest level shown in this maturity model. This level is marked by significantly more learner independence. The learner has far more control over what is being learned, how and when, choosing from a range of technologies for content creation and collaboration. At this level, learning focuses on developing independence, allowing students to make key decisions about what and how they want to learn. Technology is an important part of this because it provides students with access to large quantities of content and it also allows students to create new content themselves. This level of maturity is intended to provide students with the skills for lifelong learning, which will allow them to maintain relevant skills in a technology-rich society throughout their lives and careers. Um, basically, the immaturity model, um, as the video stated, there are five stages. Um, exchange is where we swap traditional practices with ICT. Enrich is where we engage the learners by using a rich mix of media. Enhance, we deepen the learning um, through the use of ICT. Extend, we change the content, process, and location of learning. And when we empower students, um, we enable learners to take control of their own learning. Ms. Huda? Hello, Ms. Sharon. Hi. I'm right here. Assalamu alaikum. بالنسبة للخطوات الخمسة كزي ما تعرضت في الفيديو أول خطوة أول خطوة بالسبيل استخدام تكنولوجيا معلومات والاتصالات بديلا عن الممارسات التقليدية الإثراء إشراك المتعلمين باستخدام مزيج متنوع من الوسائط التعزيز تعميق التعلم باستخدام تكنولوجيا معلومات والاتصالات التوسيع تغيير محتوى التعلم وعملياته ومواقعه 
والتمكين وهي اعلى اعلى اطار او اعلى مرحله اتاحت الفرصه للمتعلمين ليتولوا اداره التعلم. اوكي مس شاهين كمان. امم This also shows how the stages of the immaturity model aligns with Bloom's taxonomy. Um, the lowest level, of course, knowledge, then we build up to comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Bloom's <laughs> taxonomy, وبعدها الاستيعاب والتطبيق والتحليل والتركيب وآخر شيء التقييم. As I said, we've um, had this training before, so that's why I'm approaching it as a follow-up, kind of a reminder of what it is and how we're supposed to do it. Um, the resources that I've used, that I'm using for this presentation, well, some of them, um, are found on Teams. And in our subject department, um, e-maturity file. So that's where you can find some resources. Some of those resources include um, this chart. Um, it has the e-maturity model, uh, also aligned with Bloom's, and then it gives you resources on the internet that help you integrate the technology at the different levels. And this is found in that file on Teams. The المصادر المستخدمة النهاردة في الوركشوب موجودة كلها على Teams في في مجلس المواد وموجودة تحت مادة e-maturity. هي كلها كانت استخدمناها قبل كده فالوركشوب النهاردة مجرد تذكير أو يعني إعادة مراجعة للموضوع. Um, they also um, give examples of how to use a Word document at the different stages of the immaturity model, and they have a sample writing lesson and ideas for the different stages. Um, they also um, provide a sample for how to use YouTube at the different stages. Also, how you can integrate, um, how you can use PowerPoint at the different stages of immaturity. Um, there's also a sample reading language arts lessons for cycle one. Just examples of um, things the teachers can do at each stage. Um, there's an example of cycle one math. Um, there's an, a sample social studies lesson, and again, it shows ideas for all of the different the different levels of immaturity. In my life, there are many resources and there are examples. You can use them in the first and the second stage, depending on the stages and depending on the level. It's very simple. 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 Again, those resources can be found on Teams, um, our Teams, under subject departments in an e-maturity file. Um, there's some more examples, um, and they also have rubrics, so you can gauge yourself on the activity that you're planning to see what level it falls at. Um, we can also, I think we all had to do um, in March, an immaturity training on learning curve. So that's another place you can go back and look for um, ideas and resources for immaturity. Uh, of course, the MLF is on immaturity and learning curve. برضو في أمثلة كتير وفي مصادر كتير ممكن نستخدمها في الصف الصف. Okay, this model shows us um, how to use technology at all stages, but when we're planning, we must remember that purposeful digital learning puts students first. The benefits of technology can enhance 
any contemporary classroom. However, the way technology is implemented and used in classrooms of various grade levels and content areas will differ. For younger students, technology can be used to build fundamental skills to prepare them for future independent learning. Students can use interactive games to reinforce math, spelling, phonetic, and reading skills. As students um, begin to take steps to transform into independent thinkers, they can use technology to develop basic life skills. Um, using technology to acquire skills such as conducting research can be applied to any content area. And once students reach their secondary education, they can discover ways to use technology that can be beneficial for college and career development. Familiarization with Microsoft Office and Google Drive teach students to make spreadsheets, um, slideshow presentations, and share documents where they can receive fluid feedback on their work. Many careers use these elements of Microsoft and Google to organize information and collaborate between colleagues and clients. Okay. So I guess um, one thing that I can say when I'm planning, I know there are a lot of resources out and we see a whole lot and we see a lot of people doing a lot of different things. For me, I know my students and you know your students. You know your students better than anyone else. Don't just plan something just to say that you used this resource. Make sure that it's meaningful for, for the students. Um, I know in cycle one, we face the challenge of not all of our students have devices. Some of them use a different device every day. So I have to keep that in mind when I'm planning how to um, integrate technology into my lessons. Um, just because something works for someone else doesn't necessarily mean it will work for you. Again, you know your students better than anyone else, and we want this to be a meaningful experience, not a waste of time, nothing that's going to frustrate them or their parents or you. So just keep that in mind. And I'm at the end. Are there any questions? Anyone have any questions? I might not know the answer. I probably won't, but I can <laughs> direct it to someone that does. No okay. Thank Excuse you. me. Was someone saying something? Okay. Um, you.